Hello guys and welcome to this Revelation chapter 12 sign video. What I'm going to do in this video is cover everything that everybody has uh, revealed very quickly and then I'm going to build on that uh, with uh, technical information surrounding the sign. There's a lot of uh, information in this video and there's a lot of stuff that I want to cover so I hope that you enjoy it and uh, I hope that uh, you learn from this video and uh, the Revelation chapter 12 sign itself and the amazing phenomena um, that surrounds it is um, is something which is a blessing to you. So Isaiah 5.12 says, They regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of His hands. Therefore my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. God requires that we look into things um, and not just to reject them outright. He wants us to be Berean, searching His word, seeking His word. But there is also uh, knowledge which is clearly um, in the world that we should gain from and uh, the magi are an example of that um, because they certainly didn't learn what they learned in the bible but rather um, it was from the observations of uh, the creation of god which they determined um, the right time to, to to meet the messiah as a baby so <clears throat> from the ancient babylonians to the chaldeans um, who were taking these things in the sky very very seriously um, all the way up to the great um, astronomers like uh, kepler uh, galileo isaac newton these people were deadly serious about the things that were happening in the sky and i'm of the opinion that if they knew that we had what is written in the book of revelation chapter 12 that we have uh, astronomy software which is available to us and we are not taking the science seriously they would be putting their hair out in in frustration and it's easy to look at pictures and images and, and forget that out there in space is Jupiter 1500 times the massive earth flying around in retrograde motion in the womb of Virgo and these huge planets which are coming into formation precisely on the uh, date of Rosh Hashanah at the close of Rosh Hashanah to form this incredible sign which is described in the book of Revelation chapter 12. Um, also the fact that it's a prerequisite to reject atheistic humanist, humanist uh, natural law and, uh, and also understand that God is controlling this sign and he determined the sign from the beginning of the creation of the world to uh, notify us of when the rapture of the church is going to happen now a lot of people out there will say oh you know they don't know that it's the rapture of the church they don't know look my faith is is in the sign and the rapture of the church happening on the day of the sign i believe that so i'll, I'll make I'll, I'll say that outright if i'm wrong i'm wrong but i don't believe i am and I'm, I'm going to cover that in this video why i don't believe that i am um through a research and uh, and being a berean and and uh, engaging in the knowledge which is available which I hope to expose to you so first of all I'm going to go through summarizing supporting scripture uh, I'm going to go through Revelation chapter 12 my personal uh, understanding of it and how I see it Revelation 2 27 the church of the man child this is the stuff that's been um, revealed by the guys already who who there are many videos out there uh, where they they cover these these subjects Micah 5, Israel a vagabond until, ver uh, b until birth. Isaiah 26, Israel's birth without evidence. Uh, Isaiah 66, Israel's travail after birth. So she's in labor pains after her birth. And Leviticus chapter 12, Israel unclean after birth for, for seven years. So all of these things fit the model of uh, the rapture of the church and the things that we expect to happen based on the doctrine of uh, the sound doctrine of, of the rapture. Then this presentation is going to go into my own research and uh, I'm going to detail the no man knows the day, um, uh, the different uh, viewpoints of that, interpreting the Revelation chapter 12 sign itself, what we should, how we should look at the sign and, and, uh, and, and view it as far as the um, astronomical uh, movements are concerned. Reversal of the sorrowful conception and the model of how God has um, instituted things and then uh, reinstituted or, or reversed uh, that which has been instituted in the book of Genesis and uh, and Revelation. Then the model of the birth of Pharez, a uh, very interesting birth that was, and uh, the model of Sodom, Abraham and Sarah hit 100. Then we're going to go uh, over some mis recent um, misunderstandings of ancient astronomy 
and astrology and uh, the present day's understanding of what they used it for back then, um, which I, I think that uh, most people um, don't really understand. Uh, Paul's rapture clue, know and identify the stars. Believe it or not, Paul, through the Holy Spirit, admonishes us to, to know and identify the different attributes of the stars. And then uh, reviewing the five uh, planets or the wandering stars of the ancients and their biblical attributes. Then I'm going to go into the sign of the Magi in a lot of detail. Um, I'm going to show you exactly what they saw um, and then compare that to the Revelation chapter 12 sign. The three witnesses of God's cosmic clock. Um, I'm going to go through the great conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn, uh, what some of the ancient rabbis wrote about that um, and how important they considered uh, Jupiter and Saturn conjuncting in uh, Pisces, in the constellation of Pisces. And uh, the orbital schedule of Saturn, uh, how, how many times Saturn orbits around the Sun, and um, how, it's, uh, how it plays into this uh, clock. Uh, the retrograde motions of Jupiter as well, how many times Jupiter has actually been retrograde in the womb of Virgo over the last uh, 2,000 years since uh, Christ, of course, is the beginning and the end. So we should take all things from, from, uh, from him. Uh, in the heavens, what's happening in the heavens, interpreting mid-tribulation and, and the day of vengeance, I believe uh, with, with, with full confidence that we can see what's actually going to happen in mid-tribulation and uh, the day of vengeance. And we know uh, that uh, it's 1,260 days of the two witnesses will witness for, and uh, then it's 1,260 days of uh, Israel being in the wilderness and protected by God, which is uh, the great tribulation as the Antichrist enters into the temple. And, and I, I believe that we can see that in the heavens. The celestial comparison of the nativity, looking at uh, exactly what the nativity looked at from a celestial perspective. Revelation chapter 12, uh, mid-tribulation and the day of vengeance. And you'll see that it, it, it looks like an amazing story, which is which is being told in the heavens. Um, and... Uh, then I'm going to go into a Koinonia House response. Um, I'm a student of Koinonia House, so the um, Ron Matson released a video where he said there was some constellation confusion. I intend to clarify that confusion. Uh, Joshua's long day and uh, darkness at Calvary. Como Bernices, he said that Como Bernices uh, could potentially be the crown of Virgo, which is not um, uh, which which is not accurate. And uh, differentiating between the planets and the stars, um, Ron said something about that if God wanted to use um, stars for the sign, he would have used stars and not planets. So that there's not much of a, a difference between them. So starting off with no man knows the day. Um, but of that day now I knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. The two verses, Matthew ch chapter 24, 36 and Mark 13, 32. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son, Mark says, but the father. So the three different interpretations of this. Uh, the first is that uh, this is Yom Teruah, which is uh, no man knows the day or the hour. And uh, that is because uh, when there is a new moon on Yom Teruah, which is the Feast of Trumpets, uh, there would have to be two different uh, priests that would have to see the new moon and then proclaim that this is um, uh, this is the uh, the feast of trumpets or, or it is uh, officially Yom, Yom Teruah. And uh, of course, if they couldn't see the uh, the new moon because there was uh, some sort of clouds or weather um, distractions that, that prevented them from seeing it, that means that no man knows the day or, or the hour. So. There, there is that interpretation. The second interpretation is that Jesus Christ revealed um, the revelation to John after he had actually ascended to the Father after he was uh, crucified and uh, resurrected, and that then he re he received the revelation from um, from God the Father and then came down. And, and Revelation chapter one verses one, um, which is what I've got written there, uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. To show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant john so jesus didn't know it on earth he ascended received the revelation came back down and gave it to john and in revelation chapter 3 verses 3 it says that if if therefore thou shalt not watch 
um, uh, you, you shall not know the hour that I'm going to come upon you. Uh, and he's speaking to the churches. So, so that would contradict what Jesus says in Matthew um, 24 and Mark 13. So we have to divide the word rightly and understand that there was a, a 60 year um, gap between his ascension and his uh, uh, delivering the revelation to John. And uh, that's the second, um, the second sort of uh, reason why we should consider no man knows the day or the hour is something which Jesus said when he was here, but but shouldn't be applied. The third um, interpretation of this, uh, this is the one that I lean to the most, is that this verse has been taken out of context by by pretty much everybody. Uh, it's not about the rapture of the church. Uh, Matthew ch Matthew chapter twenty four thirty five um, and Mark thirteen thirty one, which uh, are the verses which precede this um, comment which Jesus made, but no man knows the day of the hour. Both say, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day, no man knoweth the day or the hour. So, so Jesus is talking about heaven and earth passing away, but his words not passing away. And then, but of the, but of the day that heaven and earth passes away, of that day, no man's gonna know the day or the hour. And that is in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1, that is uh, uh, fulfilled there where John says, And I saw new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So John is talking about when New Jerusalem comes down after the millennial kingdom uh, with the streets of gold and, um, and uh, the, um, the foundations are precious stones and, and whatnot. That's not the millennial kingdom. That's at the very end of the millennial kingdom. Um, when heaven and earth itself pa passes away. So we know that, that when Jesus Christ returns uh, back to earth in the flesh, um, he is going to restore the earth for a thousand years, and it's going to be almost um, as good as paradise, but there's still going to be sin, and there's still going to be people um, who are uh, misbehaving, and um, he prevents them from having rain and, and that kind of thing. So this verse um, at least shouldn't be taken as a means to just close the book and say no man knows the day or the hour so you've got three different reasons or interpretations which should be enough for anybody to look into this a little bit further why revelation chapter 12 this is uh, what a lot of people say is that why why is it revelation chapter 12 you know you've got this You've got Revelation 1 to 11, which, uh, which detail all these ter terrible things which are happening. And then you've got Revelation chapter 12. So um, some people have said that this is a parenthesis. So it's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's a compact um, uh, co uh, coverage of the, the whole book of, of Revelation. So it covers from um, when the rapture of the church happens, which is the man-child being caught up all the way to... Um, the end of uh, mid-tribulation when the dragon um, uh, spits out or the dragon chases after the, um, the the woman. So my personal interpretation of this is that we should look at the foundation of the world, really, which is the Torah. And the foundation of all scripture is, uh, is the Torah. So some people might say that the chapters are not... Um, are not important because they are some an addition which was added later but my answer to that is that god is sovereign and god determines uh, which the chapters would be in his word my personal view of the bible itself is very um miraculous i believe that even the chapters themselves are exactly where they should be so if we look at the torah and the patterns we see in the torah i think you might be quite interested um in what we see so Genesis chapter 12 Abraham exits Hanan now go the Lord says unto Abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee so we see Abraham exiting Hanan in chapter 12 in Genesis in Exodus chapter 12 Israel exits Egypt and it came to pass the same self day that the Lord did bring the children out of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, by their armies. So that's interesting. Genesis chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12. Abraham exits Hanan, Israel exits Egypt. Let's see if the pattern continues. 
Leviticus chapter 12. Childbirth followed by seven days of uncleanness. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of the separation for her infirmity shall she be unclean. So we see in Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus, all the chapters, number 12, seem to fit the model of Revelation chapter 12 perfectly. Let's see if we can see the same thing in Numbers. In Numbers chapter 12, we see a Hebrew marries a Gentile to much objection of the other Jews. And Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he married an Ethiopian woman. So this fits perfectly, uh, a Jew marrying a Gentile to with the objection of, uh, of other Jews. And we know that God's going to make the Jews jealous with a with a nation that wasn't uh, looking for him and then the final book of uh, the torah deuteronomy chapter 12 israel possesses the promised land deuteronomy chapter 12 1 these are the statutes and the judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land which the lord god of the fathers of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it all the days that ye live upon the earth so if we conclude this, why Revelation chapter 12? Revelation chapter 12, we see the man-child, the church is born of Israel. We see the church exits the world by the means of Harpazo. We see seven years of cleansing for Israel. We see a Jewish king and a Gentile bride married. And we see the church enters into the promised land. So that fits in perfectly with the pattern of uh, what's happening in the, the uh, chapter 12 of the Torah. So I thought you might find that interesting with, uh, with regards to the placement of chapter 12. So next I'm going to go through Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. So this is obviously the description of the sign that we see, which I'm going to go through in a little, uh, a little bit later in the presentation. The next verse, Revelation 12:3 says and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten hordes and seven crowns upon his head and his tail drew a third part of stars from heaven and it cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born okay the this is this is strange because we're not quite sure what this is because this is obviously something which is ha happening uh, in the heavens as well and a lot of people have speculated that this is uh, Nibiru or Planet X and uh, that it's going to uh, crash into Jupiter or it's going to pull a whole, a whole, a whole uh, uh, comet's tail with it and all the um, asteroids are going to come and, and hit Earth. But the, the truth is that we don't actually know what this is. Um, Revelation 12 verses 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and unto his throne. So this is clearly not Jesus Christ. Uh, the interpretation that this could be Jesus Christ is is just, um, it's it's not possible. Uh, Jesus was 33 years old. Um, he certainly wasn't a, a, a child. Um, he was not harpatsoed, which is a snatching away, a, a pulling away from danger. He ascended slowly and his uh, disciples, um, his disciples saw him ascend. Um, Revelation 12 verses 6, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of by God, that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and three score days. So this is mid-tribulation, that the woman flees into the, into the wilderness. We know that this chapter is not chronological, because as you'll see a little bit later with regards to the woman in the wilderness, um, it then refers to her, um, which is uh, the, the dragon chasing after her, uh, but which is actually after the war in heaven. So... Um, now it says that, and there was a war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So it looks like Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 is, is, a, is another description from a different perspective of Revelation chapter 12 verses 3 um, they could be referring to um, cosmological events and uh, spiritual events um, at the same time 
uh, there could be some sort of a, a planetary body which which hits um, Jupiter or uh, brings a whole lot of asteroids with it and, and at that very moment uh, Saturn is cast out we just don't know what it is but the fact that we don't know is 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 a, is also telling because it says very clearly in 2 Thessalonians 2 8 for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now leadeth will let until he be taken out of the way right so look at Revelation 12 verses 5 her child was caught up unto God and to his throne you see he's taken out of the way and then this and then the wicked is revealed so Revelation 12 3 and uh, and the dragon which we're not sure what it is fits with the typology of the the rapture of the church when the wicked is revealed afterwards so revelation uh revelation 12 3 actually fits in with this idea that the wicked is, is revealed afterwards and we know that satan and his angels are going to be cast out of heaven to the earth um and we're not going to be here for it so revelation chapter 12 fits in with the rapture of the church and what is described in 2 thessalonians 2. um Revelation chapter 12 verses 10 it says and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto death therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea the devil is come down to you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time and revelation chapter 12 10 fits in perfectly with 1 corinthians uh, 15 52 where um, paul reveals the rapture of the church to uh, the corinthians in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this incorrupt for this corruptible must put on in incorruption and mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written and this is what is written in uh, in, in 12 verses 10 there's this rejoice there's this rejoicing saying um now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our god so there's there's worship which is happening and in 1 corinthians it says then shall be brought to pass saying death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to god which give us giveth us the victory through our lord jesus christ so when we look at revelation chapter 12 itself we see the model of uh the the child being caught up which is the rapture of the church the catching away and then this revelation of something that we're not really sure what it is we're not sure what um, what Revelation chapter 12, 3 is, and uh, we're not sure about the the, um, the the dragon. So that fits perfectly with uh, with with the rapture of the church and the wicked being revealed after the rapture of the church. Revelation chapter 12 continued. Uh, the earth swallows the waters. Um, and when the dragon saw that he was cast out into earth and he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out mouth out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman and waters are seen as uh, nations um, and uh, uh, the people of nations in the bible and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So my interpretation um, of this is uh, is, a, is a literal interpretation. Um, the, the the miracles which are performed in the Book of Revelation are seen uh, all over the um, the Torah and what God did in Egypt and and uh, and subsequently. And I believe that this is going to be uh, the miracle of Korah, which um, uh, when this, when Moses um, was um, the it, he was attacked by uh, Korah, um, and and Korah said to them to Moses, he questioned his authority. And in Numbers 16, we see what God did to them. Um, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained to Korah and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them. So it takes their, their, their goods, everything that's, that, that's with them. They went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them 
and they perished from among the congregation, and all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And of course, you can see, in uh, if we go back to Revelation chapter 12, and the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth, which are the nations of people. And uh, if you want to read where that actually um, happens, uh, go to Ezekiel 32. And uh, I'm not going to go through this whole thing now. Um, you can read through it and you'll read that um, there's Meshach and Tubal. There are, um, which is uh, Turkey, there's uh, Assyria, there's e Egypt, there's all these uh, nations which all go down into the pit. Um, and uh, it's the, the, the earth um, swallowing these people up and... That is what I believe is going to happen in um, in tribulation. So the scripture, the supporting scripture of, Re of Revelation chapter twelve, uh, Revelation two verses seventeen, the rod of iron. Um, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. This is Jesus Christ um, um, writing to the church of Thyatira and saying to them that um, that he will give the, the church a rod of iron to, to rule with them. So this is, um, this is perfectly acceptable with regards to Revelation chapter 12 and the man-child being given a rod of iron um, and uh, it not being Jesus Christ, uh, it's the church. 2, Tim 2 Timothy 2.12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. So there's that reigning, us reigning with him. And Revelation 20, verses 6, They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So Jesus Christ gives the um, his authority to the church uh, to rule over the nations with a rod of iron. And uh, that's exactly what is being spoken about in Revelation chapter 12. Supporting scripture, uh, continuing uh, Micah 5, Israel a vagabond until birth. This is very interesting in Micah 5. Um, it's chronological as well, so it fits perfectly. The first advent. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is, to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from ever, from old, from everlasting. So Jesus Christ obviously came from eternity. And uh, that's the first advent in Micah 5. Then the rejection and the crucifixion um, and uh, the subsequent um, um event um, because of that with regards to Israel therefore he will give them up this is Jesus Christ until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth so Israel are, are given up by Messiah until the time that she with tra she which travaileth has have brought forth then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel so um, I think it's it's uh, it's going to be um, uh, very shocking for Israel when the rapture of the church happens and uh, when it does happen I think that the Jews are going to flock back to Israel in their droves uh, the second uh, advent uh, Micah chapter 4 and he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of his name of the Lord his God and they shall abide for now he shall be great unto the ends of the earth so Micah chapter 5 um, supports uh, Revelation chapter 12 um, perfectly. Isaiah 26, Israel's birth without evidence. So it indicates that Israel gives birth to the wind in this verse. O Lord, in distress they sought you, they poured out and whispered prayer. When your discipline was upon them, like a pregnant woman who writhes and cries out in her pangs when she is near to giving birth. So were we because of you, O Lord. We were pregnant. We writhed. We have given birth to the wind. So, obviously, when the rapture of the church happens, if Israel is uh, the uh, the model of the, the, the woman in Revelation chapter 12, she's giving birth to nothing. There's going to be no evidence of, uh, of her birth on earth because of her, her child is going to be caught up to God and to his throne. So, we have accomplished, to de we have accomplished no deliverance in the earth. So obviously we're delivered into heaven and the inhabitants of the world have not fallen. And then even more so, it talks about your dead shall live, their bodies shall rise. You who dwell in the dust awake and sing for joy. Your Jew is a Jew of light and the earth will give birth to the dead. So the birth that is being referred to that is, is the wind as far as Israel is, is concerned 
is a resurrection um, into, into life, which is not on earth. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the fury has passed by. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will disclose the blood shed on it and will no more cover its slain. So uh, the church is, is, is snatched away into safety. Um, the chambers are the very thing which Jesus has uh, promised us that he goes away to prepare a place for us and Isaiah 26 fits the model of uh, the Revelation chapter 12 child being the birth perfectly Isaiah 66 Israel's travail after birth Isaiah 66 verses 6 it's an interesting uh, chapter and verse number a voice of noise from the city a voice from the temple a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies before she travailed she brought forth before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who hath heard of such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? You see, it's the whole earth which is bringing forth. And her, her, her travail comes after her birth. This is perfect as far as Revelation chapter 12 is concerned. Or shall a nation be born at once? The whole of the, the, the church, the peculiar nation, is going to be born into the throne room of God in an instant. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. And uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And then Leviticus uh, chapter 12, which is uh, Israel unclean for seven years after birth. Um, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying if a woman have conceived seed and born a man then shall she be unclean seven days and we know that uh, israel giving birth to the church is going to bring seven years of tribulation which is uh, the time of jacob's trouble